Awesome. All right, so thank you so much for joining me today. Um, today I'm having a conversation with the original leaders in Farm to Early Care in celebration of the 10th anniversary of Farm to Early Care. Um, and these inspiring women were the original co-leaders of National Farm to School Networks uh, Farm to Preschool subcommittee that was formed 10 years ago. Um, wow. <laughs> time flies. Um, <laughs> so I'd love for us to start with some introductions. Um, so just your name, your current role, um, maybe where you were in your career 10 years ago um, and why you decided to invest time into supporting the start of Farm to Early Care. And Hi, Zoe. Okay. Hi, I'm Zoe Phillips. Uh, my role right now is very different from where I was 10 years ago. Um, I'm with the uh, Los Angeles County Department of Public Health. Uh, currently working with the Office of Women's Health, um, not too far removed from early care, but um, not the same. <laughs> um, for the past uh, 14 months, I've been doing exclusively work around COVID and our COVID response. So I had to learn a whole new job <laughs> um, and still doing it probably for another four or five months. Um, but uh, where I was 10 years ago, um, I was with uh, UEPI, uh, the Urban Environmental Policy Institute at Occidental College, um, working under Bob Gottlieb. And um, I started back in 2009, uh, actually as a volunteer, um, I had uh, received um, my MPH, Actually, that was spring 2008. Um, while I was looking for jobs, um, I bugged him till he gave me an internship. <laughs> oh. um, and uh, he gave me, you know, a set of a couple of different projects that he thought, you know, could show some promise. Uh, at the time, I had a preschooler, and he mentioned uh, what we were calling uh, Farm to Preschool as a potential project to start up. And um, I started uh, immediately writing grants, doing some program planning and development. Um, they didn't have a job for me at the time. I joined uh, the County Department of Public Health some months later. And six months after that, he called me to say the grants you know, were funded, they were awarded. Do I want a job? And I'm like, heck yes. <laughs> of course, you know, that, that was, my, the start of my baby. And, um, and then it was, I guess, probably April 2009 that I started working on this and creating um, a pilot program for uh, farm to early CE, uh, ECE or farm to preschool. Well, um, I'm Emily Jackson, and I work with the Appalachian Sustainable Agricultural Project in Asheville, North Carolina. Ten years ago, I was the program director for Growing Minds, and today I'm still the program director for Growing Minds. Um, but I'm retiring this year, so if you'd have caught me next year, I would have said I was no longer. So um, I founded this program, and we started doing Farm to Preschool back in 2000 and seven um and so uh but then joined forces with zoe and stacy uh i was at that time when we first started the subcommittee uh i was serving as the southeast regional lead for the national farm to school network when we they used to have that structure uh and stacy was uh the northwest uh rep with ecotrust um and then zoe's organization was one of the founders of the, you know, they, they were one of the core institutional institutions that were housing the, the, the network, because uh, now it's with the Tide Center, it used to be under two different organizations. So, so I was lucky enough to get in, in with them, and uh, we had a great time trying to push this movement out into fruition. 
Oh, well, thank you. Um, it's really interesting to kind of hear where, where you all started, um, where you are today. Um, and yeah, 2007, I didn't realize that uh, this kind of work was happening that far back. So very interesting. Um, so I'd love to hear more about the work that you all did. Um, so what did participating in the subcommittee involve? For each of you? Um, did you have separate projects that you were doing? Um, you know, what were some of the goals? Uh, and uh, Emily, do you want to start? Well, our, I, I think our overarching goal was to grow this movement since it was uh, nascent at that time. And, um, and so that was the overarching goal. And then, and then we did each of us kind of spearhead some different work. Um, we had work groups that we all, you know, that we led. And so for, for me, that looked like, um, I was really interested in going, taking this upstream and embedding this in the, the community college uh, programs, you know, so we're training the people while they're in school so that they just think this is the, the normal way to go about uh, your life. Um, and happy update, and it's been a long journey, but, um, we now are working with 22 of the 58 community colleges in North Carolina. So, and have current funding that hopefully in the next couple of years, we'll, we'll see that number grow even more. So I, you know, so, so the experience of working nationally and getting input from people um, uh, and, and working with others in my, in my work group really helped me to, you know, see what was needed and how to best, you know, kind of navigate that, that work. Um, let's see, I think on my end, um, it was very exciting, I think, to discover that we had, um, you know, these three different programs, different parts of the country that had been developed somewhat around the same time, a little bit staggered. But when we first learned about each other, it was, uh, I, I think, a really special moment to know that, you know, we were... Um, at first starting out, you know, independently, kind of taking our programs in different directions. And then we, once uh, the three of us got together, um, you know, we were really able to, uh, you know, look forward together and, um, you know, kind of pool our resources, um, the tools that we had developed, um, the best practices and the challenges that we had uh, gone through and to really lend that like collective knowledge and expertise um, to lead the subcommittee. And I have to say it was uh, a really special point in time. You know, there, we were three leads and, you know, we got along really well. Um, and we uh, kind of traded or, you know, shared kind of leading um, responsibilities for the subcommittee we were able to help grow uh, the members of the subcommittee so that it was far ranging from, you know, small community um, based organizations to academia to, we had someone from the CDC that was on it and very involved. Um, and, you know, while we each continue to, you know, independently grow our programs. And for us, it was really creating a really strong California-based movement. And then we eventually moved into, you know, other states in the West, even partnered with uh, a Montessori school with the Navajo Nation and um, were able to kind of tailor our curriculum that we developed um, to different cultural backgrounds, um, and ethnicities and to really work with uh, underserved uh, communities. Uh, you know, that much, you know, there are many, unfortunately, still in, you know, LA County in particular, um, but really getting to, to know the kids and build gardens. But then together, the three of us were able to help um, really build the movement, you know, on a national level. And that extraordinarily exciting as well. And we were able to jointly present at conferences. Um, and um, yeah, good, good, good memories from that. 
Oh, I remember Zoe and I one time did a conference together. There was standing room only. Mm -hmm. uh, that was so awesome. You know, we had so many uh, child care folks and Head Start folks that wanted to come into it that um, they really packed the room. That was so much fun. That was. And we were able <laughs> to integrate like different pieces of each of our curricula, bring in like different ways that we engage um, the audience. And it was a lot of fun. I have good memories from that too. Yeah, you know, I feel like um, when you do kind of all come together and work towards a goal, I mean, I'm sure you saw like a pretty rapid spread of the movement once you could all kind of like work together in that way. So it's really exciting. And yeah, about the standing room only. I mean, I feel like this movement really resonates with so many people, you know, with providers that at least I've spoken to. It's, you know, once people hear about it, it just immediately clicks because it just makes so much sense. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's great to hear kind of how, how that happened with both of you um, and that you're able to experience that. Um, so, you know, clearly you've made a real impact um, on the field. Uh, so out of your accomplishments, what would you say was the, th the thing that you're most proud of um, working on or most proud of doing um, in your farm to preschool work. And it could be, you know, back when, or um, Emily, it could be like within your, your time in this field. If you need a moment to think about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is it okay to give two? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you go. Okay, because one's more of like on the personal end and the other's more um, just kind of like the scalability piece of it. Um, so I think uh, for, for me, and you know, I, I came into this having no gardening experience. Um, and uh, as, as well as, you know, I had some like health education background and nutrition background, but um, really being able to learn myself how to garden, learn how to teach preschool age kids and their teachers how to garden, um, how to find ways to uh, make it economical, um, make it possible like full year round, even if uh, the schools were closed for periods of time watching the kids dig in the dirt in an urban setting was um, just incredible to see. And, and one experience I remember, um, this wasn't something that they had grown, but we had asked um, the nutrition director who oversaw a set of uh, preschools um, if she would start introducing more vegetables. And she said, well, if I see the kids eat it, then yes, I'll bring them in. So I think it was uh, cauliflower, actually, where we had, you know, taste tests, we had a, um, lesson plans around it, and we, we uh, actually collected the data to show that kids were actually eating it, enjoying it, and wanting more of it, and they actually brought it on the menu. And so I think that was, um, uh, I guess, gratifying <laughs> to see, you know, going from um, being able to even change the food that was getting served to them while they were getting this more like experiential experience outdoors was exciting. Um, and then I think also the development, you know, we, we developed a, a website at the time uh, we weren't able to put anything on the um, National Farm to School Networks website. So we, we developed our own and um, that was a lot of fun, a lot of work. And we were able to bring in partners from all over the country and start learning about other farm to ECC, ECE programs that you know were popping up and uh, getting to be able to share their resources and tools and putting them on the website was um, really special as well. Well, thanks for sharing that story. I, uh, Stacy is about to join us. So 
I'm going to let her um, pop in real quick. I'm having my tea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there she is. Hello. <laughs> Hi. Hey, welcome. Let me take this uh, virtual background off so you can see. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we're so late. I was probably a little overly ambitious with all of this, but um, yes, this is, yes. he's hungry. Wow, <laughs> you have a kid. Oh my God. I know, I do. This is Jasper. Here, let's make it full screen so you can see. Hold on, let's see. There you go. Hi. Hi, Susan. Jasper. <laughs> and Zoe. I used to work with them. Hi. He's like, please give me He's more. Hungry. And, then, hungry. and is it it's Sophia? Uh-huh. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Hi, Jasper. <laughs> he's a cutie. He's a cutie. He's, he's amazing. Over here is my uh my 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 dad. Oh, sorry, you can't really see him. My dad, Jeepa. <laughs> he's also visiting. He's got a full house. That sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> So we'll, we'll hang for a little bit and then I got to go put them down and then hopefully I'll be able to join for more of the conversation. Okay. Um, thanks for working me into this, even though my schedule is kind of not so uh, flexible. Of course. Yeah. Um, so we're just going around right now and talking about um, our, or not our, your guys' greatest accomplishments um, in your farm to preschool work. Um, so if you want to take a second to think about it, uh, maybe Emily, uh, you can speak to that question. And then uh, Stacy, you can introduce yourself and um, give us a nice response. All right, Emily, you want to go? Sure. Well, I think uh, it was at our annual meeting in 2009, Stacy, where the network kind of, Stacy and I both volunteered to take a crack at tried to pull this up and then, you know, we, and it happened at the annual meeting, we were since the regional leads. And so I think the, what, what the three of us did was show the network what great promise there was in this and why, you know, why the network should really invest resources and time. Um, so I think the, the, the years that we all spent together trying to build this movement just really paid off in that way. So now, you know, the network is, you know, really fully on board and have been for a long time. So, so that I think was a great accomplishment. Uh, we grew it to where it needed to grow and then the network kind of took it over, which was fabulous. Um, and I think the other thing that I'm just, um, I'm proud of, uh, of my organization and, and our North Carolina Farm to Preschool Network is, you know, creating those critical resources to make things easy. So, you know, we've got a farm to preschool toolkit that is now being sold all across the country. Um, and in that toolkit is something that we created the network, the, the North Carolina network created together, which we call Reach for the Stars. And it takes the star rating and aligns it with farm to preschool activities. So everybody's interested in their star rating. So it shows you how you can address and maintain or exceed your star rating by doing farm to preschool. Ooh. So that's just one of the resources. And then another piece of the toolkit is taking our lesson plans, which are very experiential and, and crosswalking it with CACFP guidelines so that it's a reimbursable snack. So the children are not only getting a local healthy snack, they're also getting the education associated with you know, that uh, product. So just a lot of people, Stacy and Zoe, both just real instrumental in helping, you know, all of us sharing ideas constantly. We were on the phone all the time. Um, so we were, we were doing the COVID thing before it was COVID because we were all working together nationally. Um, so, you know, it was just, it, it, you know, just opened my mind and my brain up to all the possibilities and the creativity of, of everything I'd seen from them and as well as people from across the country. Yeah, absolutely. It's so nice to see both of you. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, you know, I know that uh, your organization, Emily, has done so much work and in innovations in how we kind of see uh, farm to early care and farm to school. And I think doing those integrations of, you know, the crosswalks with CACFP and integrating into STARS 
is so integral to making this work sustainable. So um, thanks for sharing. Stacey, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about um, where you were 10 years ago during um, the beginning of Farm to Preschool and why you decided that you wanted to work in this field? Sure. Um, my mom brain turn on to work now. Um, yeah, let's see. So 10 years ago, well, when I, so I, I've been at EcoTrust actually where, where I still work for 13 years now. So I was at EcoTrust and I'm in a totally different, totally different role now um, doing more um, people oriented human resources. But, uh, but I was in our farm to, farm to school program and our food and farms team for about a decade. And um, when I first started, my boss at that time had was really excited about getting farm to preschool going, but just in a very like I'm like I'm one pilot site. Um, and I was really excited about that idea of getting the kids when they're at that super young age when they're most, you know, we, that's when their habits are really formed. And um, yeah, he's still he's hungry. You want some more blueberries? I'll keep talking while, he, while I get him some blueberries. He's also tired. So I remember though at that time that because we were, after we did that pilot, hopefully you can hear me, after we did that pilot and I think we put it online, um, we got a lot of inquiries just because there weren't very many, there wasn't much online and that what there was online was from um, Emily and, and Zoe. And so, and I knew Emily through the National Farm to School Network and I think Zoe, I, I can't remember how we met, so was it at the obesity conference or something, child obesity conference, or did we meet just through a call? You know, I, I think it was initially, um, it was a conference up in Portland. Oh, um, was it, yeah. Was it National Farm to School Network Conference? I think so. Was that in uh, like probably. March, March 2009? Yeah, probably. Did you, weren't Stacy and I presenting and you came up? Yeah. Okay. I, nice, good. Nice, yeah. nice, nice remembering. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so got connected, um, all of us on this. And I think we were all having that same experience of like people from all over the country were calling us to ask questions. And it was like, I'm not a national resource, at least for me, I'm like, I'm just doing a single little program that we'd like to expand. And Emily and Zoe, I think have both been doing more, but also kind of similarly felt like we're getting so much interest and like, the, and, and we have this access to this national network. It would be so cool to have a national movement or have national support for a for farm to preschool. Um, so that's really how that all got started. And I think the other thing that, um, I think that, oh, ooh, that's my, um, my cord. Can I take that from you? I know it's exciting. I'm gonna move it over here. Um, the other thing that, uh, that we started doing a little bit after that, it's probably 2012 or 2011, um, was we built out a branch of our, our statewide network. So we have a statewide farm to school network that's really strong, helped pass a, we have a, now a $50 million farm to school bill um, in Oregon, but we built out a farm to preschool branch of that um, with all the different early child care um, stakeholders. And I know that's not, they, it basically got um, subsumed by the broader network eventually because we were like, we don't need it. It can just be part of the bigger network. But actually was talking to um, Angela Hedstrom, who is now our uh, farm school. She what's her new, she has a different title, but she, she does our farm to preschool work um, and has for a long time, has a long history in farm to preschool. But uh, she was just talking about reinvigorating that network yeah. and feeling like there's a little bit more of that need to support it sort of with its own oh. focus on a statewide level. That's probably enough. I don't know <laughs> what else to add, but it was a really exciting time. I'm really, I'm really like proud and excited and it's amazing to see this still happening. Yeah. Yeah, you need some more food. I'm gonna get him a little bit more food. <laughs> yeah, excellent He's multitasking. Uh oh, there's peach on the ground, isn't there? I'll get that. No, that's on the ground. <laughs> Well, you know, we can't really talk about from the preschool without having a little one on the call. Yeah, <laughs> very <laughs> apropos. <laughs> yeah. Especially wanting more blueberries. <laughs> yes. Blueberries. blueberries. You want cherries? I want some cherries. Uh -oh. So, Stacy, kind of what you had mentioned about seeing this still going and growing, um, kind of going off of that. And this is just for anyone that wants to answer. Um, you speak to uh, some of the growth that you've seen over time and whether this movement is where you thought it would be when you were starting this work. Mm. Well, I can speak to a, a, a little bit. Um, North Carolina has maintained a strong statewide um, network 
And so, but by virtue of holding, you know, keeping that straight, um, we've got a grant that's very involved with, with uh, National Farm to School Network. It's the Association of Public Health. Oh God, Association of State Public Health uh, Nutritionists, Aspen. So they pulled down some CDC money and were able to distribute that. Well, states applied and so North Carolina applied and we were selected as well as um, 10 other states and the District of Columbia. So that to me shows uh, some strength, some, um, you know, people had to have a lot, a lot of partnerships to, to apply. So uh, to me, that's showing that there is a lot of infrastructure out there for this, um, that it is growing. Um, this, I, I'd say that this, uh, group of folks in, 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 re, in relation to the K-12, it's, it's a lot harder. They're so much more underfunded. They're, you know, their pace is so abominable. Um, you know, there's a lot of really, there's a lot of entrenched problems with early care and education uh, that I'm not saying there aren't in K-12, but even more so. So I, I think it's even more of a success that we've been able to build out the infrastructure that exists now uh, with the leadership of the National Farm to School Network, of course, um, but but this Aspen Fig grant uh, that North Carolina and other states are involved of, I think, is an example of the success of the movement. Yeah, absolutely. Does anyone else have any thoughts on that? Um, I know for myself, I have been, you know, a little more removed from it uh, for a while, but um, uh, but I have, you know, kind of kept in touch, you know, with with what's happening, um, particularly with, um, you know, on our end in in Los Angeles, uh, Rosa Romero, uh, you know, has been working, you know, on it since 2010, um, and kind of took over the directorship, you know, when I left and. You know, I always have to check in with her um, because it's just, uh, you know, it's kind of like, you know, your baby. <laughs> and um, so I, it's exciting to hear, you know, the developments and for the movement and that it's, you know, both it's at a local level, state level and national level. And that's definitely, you know, that that was back in you know, 10 years ago, kind of like our hopes and dreams that it could develop to that point. Uh, definitely, uh, you know, there's been improvements in offering funding, you know, at a national level as well. If there could be even more, that would be better because, you know, funding is really what helps support, support um, not just the organizations working on it, but all the individual, um, early care sites as well and to really keep them going and and keep them bring this you know alive and fruitful <laughs> pun intended <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know that's a great point and i think the the grants that you had mentioned emily are a good start to that and um, a good reflection of that how we're getting more of that national support and capacity for states to do more of this work uh, more broadly. Um, so what do you all see for the future of Farm to ECE? Um, do you see any promising opportunities ahead? Or um, if not that, a kind of personal vision of what you would like to see in the coming years? There's a lot of questions in there, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And that's just for anyone that wants to take that. I'll um, just, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, you go ahead. I was just gonna say, um, thinking about a lot of what my work is focused on right now um, with EcoTrust, just like more of a racial justice focus and um, anti-racist kind of lens to that work. And I know that um, Farm to School Network is already doing a lot of that work. So just thinking about that, Specifically for the um, <laughs> specifically for the um, for the child education. 
What, what do you want? Yeah. Maybe it's, it's a zipper. It's very exciting. <laughs> I'll leave it there. That may be as much as we get. I hope with the current administration that we're going to see more funding. I, I think the pandemic showed, you know, a lot of things to us about our country. And one is that our the infrastructure for early care and education is just, you know, vastly underfunded. So hopefully we're, we're going to see more universal child care, um, you know, and that'll raise up racial equity issues while also um, making room, I think, for things like farm to preschool because people won't maybe struggling so much with the, the funding issue, hopefully. Yeah, I'm in complete agreement. Um, you know, I do kind of recognize, you know, um, you know, where we, we may not be, the ones talking here today may not be the ones who are directly affected, um, but to recognize it and help elevate it, I think is hugely important um, that this movement can find a role in helping, uh, you know, decrease structural racism improve disparities um, and move towards improving, you know, even uh, food insecurity as well, um, which affects, you know, so many kids and families, you know, in this nation. Um, I think, you know, the having, you know, a, a farm to preschool program in any type of early care setting kind of like as a default would be incredible if it was just if it became the norm um would be fantastic for local food to be served to the kids if they have a program you know where they're getting food um and to bolster up the farmers in that way uh um would be incredible just think of all the joy and wonder out there if every kid could be exposed to a, a garden you know just uh, that they're, yeah, I mean, you know, that, that just could, that just could be a beautiful thing. That was just so. Yeah, that's, I love that. It's a beautiful point to kind of end on. Um, I just want to say Stacy uh, is unable to speak at the moment because of chats, but she did mention in the chat that um, in Oregon, universal preschool passed statewide in the fall. So congratulations to you guys. It's really exciting. Um, all right, so does anyone have any last thoughts that they'd like to share before we finish up? Hey. I guess I'd just say it was an honor to work with these two women and all the other people in our subcommittee and I learned so much and it's definitely a, was a high point in, in my life and in my career and I thank you both very much. Yes, same for me. It's such an honor. It's so nice to see both of you. It's been a long time. I'd love to catch up sometime <laughs> on another Zoom call or something. <laughs> But it's pretty, yeah. it was highly collaborative work. And I feel like maybe that's like, that's an important point. And it's like, it wouldn't have happened unless we all came together and really built, built, built out what we had together and shared, shared our resources, you know, a really collaborative, mm -hmm. wonderful effort. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, hope, I, I hope for those listening in that you can hear the joy in our voices, just being able to see each other again and reflect. I mean, it, it was, you know, I'll just kind of reiterate what Stacey just said. It was true collaboration. Um, and we took that collaborative model, you know, and expanded it and brought in so many other partners. Um, it was uh, for me too, definitely a, a high point that I look back at, you know, really fondly on. Well, thank you so much. Um, really, really, it's really great to hear kind of your voices. And I know that all of you have done such amazing work and I'm happy that you got the opportunity to see each other again. If you want, I can just hop up and you get it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Sophia, for getting us together. Yes, yeah. thank you. And for, so for working persistent. with our schedules. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. 
Um, but yeah, have a great rest of your days and um, happy 10th anniversary of Farm to Early Care. Thank you, um, thank you again so for your much. time. Thank you. Bye. Bye, y'all. <laughs> Thanks so much, everyone. Thank so you. Good to see you.